When we visit a URL in an app, we are actually sending a GET request to a known endpoint in a server, and the server will send us the corresponding page. Now React Router is a client-side routing service, and that means the server wouldn't have known about the route registered in the React Router. So that means if we try to send a GET request with a route defined inside the React Router to the server, the server is likely to send us back a 404 response because the route was registered inside the client side, not the server side. This could be a problem if we do not have control over the server side code. For example, if we want to deploy our app on a static side hosting provider like GitHub Pages or Netlify, then our app should not work. So how do we solve this problem then? The answer is to use something called Hash Router, which is an alternative router provided by the React Router library. Let me show you how it works. Let's go to our code. We will go to our main JSX file, and currently, as you can see, we're using the browser router. If we want to change it to the hash router, we simply need to change the import to hash router instead of the browser router, and load hash router inside the render function. Let's go to the browser and take a look at the behavior of the hash router. So currently, we are in the home page, and if I click on the contact link in the navbar, notice what is happening inside the URL bar. Instead of having a full URL, we have a hash sign in between the primary domain and the contact URI. And that is exactly the difference between a browser router and a hash router. The URI that you're seeing now is actually a fake URI that was not loaded from the server side, but instead from the client side. And to clarify the concept once again, we are sending a request to the backend server by the root endpoint. Once the server sent us back the React application, then React Router will take it from there by looking at what's after the hash sign and render the page accordingly. That way, the server does not need to know about the contact endpoint because it was handled by the React Router on the client side. And hence, in theory, our React app should work in any static hosting provider. And there you have it. That was a brief introduction to hash router in React. In general, I would not suggest you to use the hash router unless it is necessary. If you can use the browser router, then by all means, use it. Only use the hash router when there's no other workarounds. And if you're wondering why is the browser router working in our local development environment, it is because the Vite development server is handling all the routing logic for us behind the scene. It is acting as a web server for our React app. There are also other routers that we can use in our React project, like the memory router or static router. However, they are a bit more advanced, so maybe we'll talk about them in a future episode. All right, we'll continue in the next lesson. Key takeaways for this lesson, hash router is an alternative router to use when we can't register routes in a web server for some reason. React router will render the page based on a hash portion in the URL if we are using the hash router. That's it for now, and I'll see you again in the next video. If you would like to see more content, consider supporting us by becoming a member at my website, acadia.io. It is similar to Patreon, but in return, you get a lot of premium tutorials and lessons. If you can't become a member, that's totally fine. We are just happy that you are here. We spend a lot of time and energy to produce high quality videos for you. Feel free to check out our other videos on YouTube, and if you can leave a thumbs up, you will really make my day. If you subscribe, I would jump for joy, and I'll make more videos for you. Thanks for your support, and I'll see you next time.